Yo, from the West Coast to the East Coast and everything between, folks, you are live with Rhymes of the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. We do this every Tuesday and Wednesday night, Tuesday and Thursday night. Tonight is Thursday. I got a special guest in the house. We had a small, minor uh, te technical difficulty. We were supposed to start at 6 o'clock, but unfortunately, we, we can't uh, start. We're starting right now because they're tripping on Facebook. Anyway, I'm trying to get my guest to notify him that we are, had to change the link. So give me a second, folks. Bear with me right quick, and we should be right back. Hey, Steve, I sent you a new link. You did? Yeah, I just sent it to you uh, from Alonzo, uh, from LIC. I had to change links right quick. Come on in. Come on in. In my email? Uh, yes. Your uh, strange motel music. Okay, here we go. All right, cool. All right, folks, that was my man Steve Russell from Troop. We had a minor difficulty, man, minor situation. Sometimes if you start too early or too late, Facebook will kick you out. So we had to reschedule the show. Started on another channel. We started on another link, but we're all here. He'll be right here. We just had him together a second ago, so uh, just a matter of, matter of time for he'll be right back into the channel. But uh, hope everybody's doing good today. It was a warm day in L.A. It's hot as hell out here today, folks. I'm going to break out my Cadillac tomorrow. I don't know about y'all, but I'm breaking out the kitty cat tomorrow. The convertible, yes, we will be hitting uh, some corners tomorrow. My man Steve just stepped in. What's up, Steve Russell Hartz from Troop? What's up, Doc? How you feeling? Can you, can you hear me? I hear you fine, Doc. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm feeling good, man. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good. Man, it's been a while since we had a chance to kick it, Doc. <laughs> What's you know, up, uh, man, we hit a, a, we uh we hooked up in Sacramento a couple years ago at an event, man, and we just gelled like uh, two two peas in a pod, Doc. And uh, I'm I'm mean to ask you about that uh situation you was going to do. You said you were going to an island to get a cleansing or something like that. Remember that? Uh yeah, I went to huh. Peru. Yeah, I went to Peru for a seven day ayahuasca retreat. How did that work out for you, man? Uh, you know, I love the medicine. You know, I have a, a enlarged prostate, so uh, that's that's my medicine of choice, and it, it, it's it's good, man. It's really good medicine. Ayahuasca is one of the. Uh, it's a full body medicine. It heals everything going on in your body, and it went great, man. I, me and my wife, we went down there seven days. Well, actually, eight days. Okay. We did seven days of ayahuasca, uh, and it was amazing, man. Uh, they say you see, they say sometimes you do, do a little hallucinating and some other stuff, with some cleansing. I saw my boy, uh, what's the comedian's name, uh, Ron White. Uh huh. He, he went down and did the same thing. He had to stop drinking. He had to yeah. kick alcohol off. That's part of his show. He had okay. to do a ayahuasca, man. He said, uh, you know, it was it was hard at first. Then it then all of a sudden like the world opened up to it, man. Yeah. It's tough because it's hard because the ego is there and the ego is always unsafe and insecure. And we don't we wasn't taught about the ego. We were taught that the devil was on a hot sauce bottle. <laughs> So we don't realize that 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 thing that we call the devil and not in the total negative, negative, bad sense, but that devil that we're talking about is already a part of this flesh and the medicine, ayahuasca and combo and DMT, those medicines help you put your ego in a place where it benefits you and not rules you and ruin things for you, okay. you know, so now, it's, you know good. it's good stuff, man. Now you also left Pasadena. And move to Texas. Yes, sir. Come on, man, talk to me. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I've been in California my entire life, and I was just ready for a change. You know, after my mom passed, after my mom transitioned a few years ago, everything for me honestly changed as far as the way I looked at the world and looked at the friends or so-called friends or just people that that I was around in the business that I was pursuing. You know, I've been in the music, you know, I've been in the music business since I was 14. So I just, you know, I just was ready for a change, man. Ready to, you know, I got tired of worshiping music and you got to be in the studio in order for your life to be this, or you got to have this for people to look at you this. So I was, I was just, once I was over that, the move to Texas just made everything beautiful, man. You know, uh, you know I, go ahead, man. You said a lot in that statement right there, Doc. You said well, a lot I'm, in that statement. I'm happier now. You know, I've been in the music business chasing Grammys and number one records. And please listen to my song. Hope you like my song to get on your album. I've been doing that for so long until it ran its course in the sense of me 
trusting in that to be mm. my means. Uh, okay. Once my mom passed, I don't know what it did, but it made me very, you know, I was the only child and that was my only mm. pain. Once, once, she, once she took her last breath in my hand, Lonzo, I mean, when I tell you the world changed for me in that instant, the things that I worshiped and looked to to bring a certain joy to me, I knew right then I was gonna be responsible. I had to be responsible for my joy. And I just took it upon myself to step back from the music. Uh, I, I, I started shooting my own movie and I just focused on that. And I just freed myself from a lot of the things that I had trained myself to, to, to operate in as far as this music business goes. And you, you know how this goes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, you know, sir. I don't have to tell you, you know how this stuff is, man. And I had to pull away from the worship of this, 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 this wicked business and I'm free from it now. So now I'm operating in it on purpose and it's lovely, man. I love Texas. In, you know, um, I was thinking about some of the things you're saying right now. I was talking to a buddy of mine about some of the youngsters today in this music game. You know, we made music because we love music. Yeah. Uh, they make music to make money. We made, we wanted to make money too. But yeah, it but seemed, it, 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 we wanted to make money too, but it seems like to me, you know, remember that movie with Richard Pryor, Brewster's Millions? <laughs> People yeah. made all, he made, he had 30 million, he had 30 million dollars, but he had to spend it all with yeah. nothing to show for it at the end yeah. of his life to get 300 million. Yeah. And it seems like, and I was watching a video yesterday on YouTube about uh, how, how how these guys spend their money. And we didn't make the kind of money they make. I, no. I know record crew didn't, okay? No. And mm -hmm. and to see guys spend half a million on a chain, uh, 400000 on a car, I understand it's their money. They're going to do what they want to. But it seemed, like it, it's, it seemed like they're in a rush to get the money right back to the folks they got it from. You know, it's like, dude, you, you can build generational wealth with this chain you got around your neck. You can start something... But for folks to come behind you, leave them something other than a bunch of goddamn chains, and it's like they just don't get it. And you know, and once you once you've been there and done that, you realize, yeah. man. And that's the part you can, and you can't tell these cats nothing right now while yeah. they're going through it. They don't want to hear that shit. They think this all, oh, man. It's all, dude. One day the limelight is gonna go <laughs> off. The limelight is gonna go off, and you gotta find some other way to get your adrenaline fixed. I get mine through podcasting. You get yours right. through making movies. We're gonna talk yeah. about your, your television show in just a minute. But you know, once that and, and I think, like my buddy who's a dope dealer, he said, Man, the biggest, the most addictive part of the game ain't the dope, it's the money. It's the okay. money. Uh -huh. And the, one of the biggest parts, one of the biggest addicting parts of being in this business is the attention you get. Okay. You get people give people give you attention, they give you money, girls like you. All of a sudden, you walk in the club, nobody don't know you no more, okay? They ain't checking for you no more. And now you got to figure out some way to stay relevant in your own mind because that devil in you, that devil in you makes you want to have that attention, okay? Yes, ego. That ego. Oh, man, anybody, so now you start doing dumb shit to get attention, and next thing you know, you're asking on TMZ and handcuffs. Anyway, man. Yeah, yeah. Sucks. I think, you know, and, and I have to, I can't be such a, 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 a out of touch guy when it comes to what you're saying, because when you come from a certain kind of poverty, mm. it's almost like when you get your foot in the door to make some money, you want to, and, and not in a bad way, it's ignorant, but the ego makes you want to make up for something as if you missed out on something so this is why you see all the chains and people spending the money because you you want to make up for something that you miss you want to like kind of catch up not realizing that that money tree that you're in the leaves fall off at a certain time fall yeah. off yes fall off yes man. the leaves gonna fall off and you're gonna wish you had them leaves man yeah. come yeah. on dude and, um, and uh, ain't, nothing, ain't, nothing, ain't nothing worse, man, to see a cat that had it. Let it get away and talk about what he used to have. Man, you ain't got to do that, dude. Nah, you know, you, you, can, right. you can still have it. Now, I did this right here. I know cats that, you know, that was balling out of control, man, in, back in the, in the 80s and 90s. And, man, wish they wish they could find some part of that money. You know, they doing some yeah. old other shit now. Yeah. You know, the, the, coat, the fur coats, the roses, the, the jewelry, the girls that got old. 
And they ain't got nothing to show for them time, but some memories. And half them cats got Alzheimer's. So you really got a problem. <laughs> it's bad, man. It's bad. You know, I just wish that, I wish that the young generation could really, really graduate from the material sense because that leads us down the wrong road. The generational wealth is key, man. Yeah. Making making it better for the generations that that's coming after us is so important. But like you said, man, somebody, you know, you land in the money tree right now. You want to live, you want to do your thing. You know, you ready for people to see you shining. And yeah. uh, it's not as important as it seems. Right. You want to compete right now. It, what do you and the, the next question is what are you competing for? Okay, think about this, man. Because no matter how much money you got, how much how much change you have, how, how fly your car is, somebody got one that's bigger and better. Okay. Period. You may be, you may be the hot guy for the week, you know, or the hot new the uh, the trendy guy for the week, but as soon as somebody else put a um uh one guy buy a chain, put a remote control on the chain, got a little remote control car. Other guy put a diamond in his forehead. Okay, come on, man. You keep on after up to any, and, and now you're putting your life at risk to, for what? For you, for some Instagram likes? Some, yeah. some, some you? Come on, man. Like hey, like Cat Williams said, man. You in the you, you in that uh, Chevrolet feeling good into that Maybach really? Let like Maybach pull up. Yeah, <laughs> it's the 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 the, the, uh, the the 300. The 300. Yeah. <laughs> You, the three hundred look like it looked like a bit looked like a um uh a Maybach. Yeah, yeah. to that Maybach really pull up on your ass, okay? <laughs> it, you know, so it's like uh people that's a great question. You said who are you competing with? Who are you competing with? It, it it's a wasted energy to try to keep up with the Joneses materialistically. That's just a waste. You know, uh it's best to have, you know, enjoy what you like but have balance to it. You you know, if if you only knew that the money is not going to last, you would appreciate it a little better. Yes. yes. And you, you know, only got 15 minutes, baby. You only got 15 minutes. That's it. Sometimes <laughs> 10, bro. Huh? So I got 10. 10. You know, we, we you guys had a, you guys had a nice little run though for troop, right? Yeah, we had a we had we were fortunate, man, from out of Pasadena, man. We made a way out of no way, man. Thank God we, we had a nice run. And out of that, that run we had, we were able to get a couple hit songs that are never going to go away. Now right. that's, you know, that, that's, 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 that's the beauty of it. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. the part people don't understand. If you get a, get you one hit record, one, <laughs> one that people just like forever. Yeah. You always going to get a check, baby. You are, and, and you won't, you won't get that. Talking about your hood, talking about your glasses, talking about your car, because nobody cares about your shit. It may sound good for right now, but it, it won't have that e an eternal groove that yeah. people are gonna like forever. Especially, and that's why love songs last so long because they affect people in a different emotional way, and people and love, love them because I met this girl. I was this this was the this was the, this was the cut back here when I had when, 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 this is my girl's song back here. I love this song because. We met on this song. We danced on this song. Whatever. You ain't doing that to gangster rap. Go ahead. <laughs> nah. Uh, see, love lasts forever. That's why love songs, a certain kind of love song will always last. See, if you're talking about a certain kind of glasses or a certain kind of watch on your record now, shit, in, in a year or two years, that's not even going to be a popular watch. That, sh that shit, it, that so shit goes away. It's old. All right. You know, right. you're old now. Yep. Hey man, you got old. I done got old. What 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 you doing over? There? I know what I'm doing. What you doing over there in, in, in Texas, man? I think you got a television. I thought it was a movie, but it's a series. Yes. Man. Tell, tell, tell them about day ones, man. Okay, I got a, my new film. Uh, my new TV series is out. Eight episode series on Amazon Prime on the XOD Network. It's on the Rewind Network on Roku. Oh. Uh, it's day ones. It's, a, it's the new boys in the hood meets minister society uh, about two young guys, two best friends that grew up in the streets, hustling and stealing and doing whatever they could to survive, but only based on what they saw in the sense of the, sh the, the, the environment that they came up in in Compton. They saw that this is how people get their money without giving themselves a chance to 
vibrate in and decide what you really want. So the whole movie, while they're stealing and doing and doing all of these things to make money and hustle and to live, you have this over sense from one of the fathers of you create your own reality. You know, look back in your past. If you're hurt from things that have gone on as a childhood, if you didn't get enough hugs from mama, deal with that. You know, let that manifest so that you can heal from it so that you can start to attract this life that you really want because the jacking and stealing ain't gonna do it, you know? And and it's, it's, it's a really good tale of seeing, you get an opportunity to see why the guys are violent in a certain way and why they're so about their business. One didn't have a mother, and one of one guys had a one of the guys had an absent father who disappointed him, never showed up, promised it. You know, so these kids are hurt. Right. So people hurt people, you know, and that's what it's about. These young guys dealing with their past, you know, even though it's a street hood film, it's esoteric in the sense of that these guys gotta look within in order to make a change. You know you what? Know? I I got it. I got the trailer here, Doc. Oh, okay. Yes. I think I can play it. I'm gonna try and play the trailer, man. Hold on, let me try to take it to the top right here. Yes, yes, yes. Can we, we hear it? Can you hear it? No, I don't hear any audio, but that's it. Uh, well, talk, tell, tell, them, tell, them what we, tell us so, what, we, what we experienced, so Doc. You're looking at the two members. They're talking. There's kids now. This is them as children, and you see in the trailer that, you know, they're talking about they always wanted money. This is him getting dropped off by his mom at his dad's house. So he has to deal with that. See, he's an adult dealing with that. You know, it's 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 tough, man. It's a real life situation in this movie, man. And I, I urge everybody who can go to Amazon Prime, binge watch day ones. You're gonna get a lot out of it. It's very entertaining. It's it's very suspenseful. It's a lot of wonderful cliffhangers. It's definitely gonna keep you interest interested. It's not your typical B movie where it's just this or that it really has a, a, a aim and a goal and it's really enjoyable man i've got nothing but uh a, a bunch of great feedback we got uh close to 150,000 uh minutes streamed on it already within a week and a half okay so doing good man so please everybody let's check let's let's support day ones man it, it's happening tell them you where know? they can find that again doc you can find it on Amazon Prime under Day Ones, um, or you can, I have my company, Black Box, that produced the film. We have our own channel on a, uh, the XOD network. It's a very yeah. it's a really free app. It's called XOD. You can download the app and you can go to my channel, Black Box, and you can see Day Ones, and I have other content as well. Um, okay. Um, my new project um, I'm working on is my first cousin. His name is... Um, El Raider Browning, they call him Ray Ray Browning. He's been in the feds for you know over 30 years. So we're doing a, a documentary on his life right now. Um, um, we got a lot of good projects coming, Lonzo. You need okay. to, we need that Lonzo documentary. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I got a channel myself I'm pushing, okay? I, I just start, launched a new channel myself through Homegrown Media Network on nice. uh, Roku. And uh, maybe we can exchange some products and content, man. Come on. Ain't nothing but something to do. Ain't nothing, and that's, that's, that's how you do it, man. We, it's enough people to go. People are going to watch your channel. They may want to watch my channel. Yeah. It don't make no difference. Because if you think about this, especially nowadays, with all the different apps, you see the same movies on the yeah. same apps over and over again. I see Boys in the Hood every damn place, okay? So ain't no haterade on when it comes to uh, movie because because the customer got the final say so anyway the viewer has the final say so. Yes, so I would love to have some content on your channel. We definitely have to talk about that, bro. I'm definitely, with that we'll definitely talk about that off, off off camera, Doc. Man, uh, how how are yeah. guys in truth? Man, how, how how your truth boys doing? Everybody good? Every yeah, everybody's good, man. I just got off the phone with Rodney. He's a uh, record. He's working on a new record. You know, Rodney was. He's the founder of the group, but when he got me and Alan in the group, he kind of stepped back on the vocals and didn't sing a lot. You know, it just did his ah. parts. But like he sounds like R. Kelly. He's always been awesome to me. Okay. So, recording his his first album. So you know, he, I'm excited about that. Alan just released a, a new project. John John just released a new project. So everybody's doing good. Um, 
and we're out on the road performing. You know, not as much as we would like, but um, we're yeah, out. We on, do that. We're out on the road doing the Back to the '90s shows, man, and they're doing. We're killing it out there, man. Man, they skipped over the '80s shows, man. I only got I only got a couple calls because I'm the '80s. I'm I'm the I'm the king. We the king rock in the '80s, doc. And but, um, they got some more coming up. So we I, I talked to uh. A booking agency today, man. So you might see us out there doing a little something, something in the near future, Doc. I yeah, would we, love to go back on the road, man. I was talking to uh, Fourth MDs. We had a we had a great time back in the eighties, man. Just yeah. doing our thing, Doc. It was just you know, and the vibe was so much different. You know, yeah. we yeah. didn't have the same. Nobody ever got crushed in one of my shows, man. Everybody right. sat down and they watched the show right. from a seat. You know, yeah. uh, go it's ahead. A, it's a different thing now, man. It's it's really really. Man, you know, we're living in a, some kind of world right now, Lonzo, man. Well, you know, I was telling my buddy the other day that uh, one of the reasons why you have situations like what you had in Texas is because they took all the seats out the venues, okay? Yeah. You got people standing around, and so you got people that want to get up close. You got people, man, maybe, I don't know, 300 feet from the stage, okay? You had 50,000 people. That's man. a lot of people, man, to standing around. I mean, I've seen it happen before. At festivals, at festivals, but yeah, but this, I, but they, at one point in time, they kind of banned the festival style of, uh, concerts. It yeah. made you put seats in the place because yeah. keep, keep this from happening. Yeah. And um, it just, but I was also telling the guy earlier, earlier on, I had to respond to one of my uh, my viewers. You know, I mean, it, it, this is a uh, a very unfortunate situation for everybody involved, man. Yeah, everybody. I mean, everybody. Uh, ain't nobody went under this right here. The people that died, Travis Scott. That can mess your head up, man. That's a bad situation, man. People telling you you're responsible for eight people dying. It, I don't know the whole situation. I don't know the whole situation. But because he was on stage, it's his fault. I know if he told him to come on down. Or it, I know he didn't tell him to crush the people in front of him. But I'm just saying, just to have that all wake up Monday morning and the whole world is on your head, that's a bad feeling, Doc. That's a bad feeling. We never had those issues, man. I mean, everybody said, especially right now, we were on tour right now. The most popular uh, section would probably be the handicap section. <laughs> the, the wheelchair section, okay? It'd be more wheelchairs out there than anything, all right? But it'd be, it'd still be fun. You good? Say, say that Say that last part again. I, I said, I said uh, if we go on tour right now, probably the, the, the most popular section would be the handicap section or the wheelchair section. Because most folks are gonna be in, you know, they're gonna be they gonna be sitting down. You lost me? I didn't do nothing. I didn't change nothing. Nothing changed. It's my, my sound started to act funny for some reason. It's I hear so you. I hear I hear you fine. Can you hear me good? Yeah, yeah. Okay, beautiful. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I hear you fine, Doc. I don't know, I don't know uh what happened. Well, I haven't changed anything. Okay, we're good. Okay. Ah, right, yeah, man. So, yeah, I would love to get on the road, man, and have some fun with, with the fellas out there once again, man. You know, it's you know fun. If, if you can do this, man, even my cousin is Lenny Williams. You you, you, you oh, met okay. him in a, in, a San, in a Sacramento with me. I'm that dude is like, that dude's 77 years old, man. And he still gets to do what he loves for a living, man. Come on, man. That's beautiful, Doc. Yeah, he's, out, he's out on a cruise right now. I think yeah. it might be. He gets back Sunday, maybe. He's been out yeah. on a cruise for Eight days. Hey, I mean, on a song for Lenny. Huh? You working on a I'm song working, with him? I'm working on a song for Lenny right now. Are you really? <laughs> oh, okay. Shit, that's good. Yeah. That's fantastic. Glad to hear that, Doc. Yeah. Glad to hear that. You got a title yeah. yet? Not yet. I, you okay. know, uh, I we started last year right before COVID. Okay. And so the ideas that I was working on before I moved to Texas, I'm, I'm starting a whole new thing though. So we just talked like a week ago and he said he was ready. So I'm just mustering up different musical ideas now. Okay. So but we're going to do something hot. All right. Okay. Now let's get back to your movie, your, uh, your show for a minute, man. Um, how long did it take you to shoot, shoot those eight, those eight episodes? Um, I started in 2019. I started shooting and, um, it took so I'll say a year. It, okay. it took me a year to get all the footage that I needed to get the series done. It took from it took a year, a solid year, and I finished editing when I got to Texas. I finished editing everything and, and got it finished finally, and um, and pushed to it to get it out. So you did the editing too? Yeah, I edited, scored it. 
I did everything, bro. This is this wow. is you know the yeah. sacrificial on yeah. it goes. You don't yeah. have too many on deck. You know, everybody wants to get paid, bro. Everybody so, wants to get paid. Yeah. So this was one of those situations where if I couldn't afford something to get done, I did it myself. And uh fortunately for me, it turned out good. All right, Doc. I'm gonna go to go to the uh chat room for a minute. It was okay. up. Uh hope y'all doing good. Cool show, man. What's up, Mr. Steve from my boy Marlon? Uh, what's what's up? up from Kareem Smith from Vegas is in the house? Um what's up? Bill Bexler from Oklahoma. Salute to Lonzo Troophead. A lot of hits back. Yes, they did. That's why he's on the show today, folks. Sandborn, yes, yes. salute Lonzo. Um Rashad, Rashad Cobb. What up, Marlon? Are they talking to each other. Um, Mr. Steve loved your music back in the day. Happy holidays to you and your family. Thank uh, you. That's my that's my attitude. Uh, that's my attitude. That's my favorite. Attitude. Okay. Yeah, that was our, one of our singles. Okay. Okay. That's my attitude. Okay. Yeah. Uh, much love to, from from Detroit. We got we got folks all over the country watching the show, man. I have a pretty yeah. I, I, I got a pretty wide audience, Doc. They watch us from all over the world, actually, and that's the beauty it. of YouTube. Um, and I get a chance to reconnect with my buddies, man, and just kick it on about stuff that we're doing now. Cause what's the, when the light go out? What you gonna do next? Yeah, man. Yeah. What man. you gonna do next? When the light yeah. go out, what you gonna do next? Okay. You gotta reinvent ourselves, man. Constantly gotta reinvent yourself, man. And that's what happens. You can't. And, uh, it's a uh, saying I saw the day. Um, what did it say? Um, uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. But it's, none. it's best to know many than to be a master of one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and that's something that I because uh, people use that in a negative way. Jack of all trade, master of one. Yes, I can do a lot of stuff, but because I can do a lot of stuff, like Steve, Steve can shoot, do his own music, do his own editing. Steve can get stuff off the ground. When if you're a master of one, if you just shoot and can't edit, you got a problem. You got a problem, man. If you can't do your music. You got a problem. Okay. You can't Vocals, and you need somebody to come sing for you. You got an issue, and you got if you ain't got no money, you better learn how to do some stuff real quick. And I learned that as a homeowner, as a club owner, if you if you, if you got a tool, if you know how to use some tools, you better put them to use, Doc. And thank God, I, brothers like yourself can do that. And what was your budget, man? You, you had you had idea what your budget was? Uh, um, there was no budget. I know, I know the feeling. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> It, it, there was no budget, but only enough budget to get it done. You get what I'm saying? Like I get it all day, Doc. There was, there was, there was no slated budget. I had to make, I had to make the decision whether I was going to produce this movie with what I had or not. And I made the decision to shoot the movie, deal with people that understood what I was, what the goal was, and get it done. And you know how the universe works, man. Once you got your mind set on something on high, man, you know it. It puts everything in place. All the, all the characters come into play, and um, you know we we had a. We, I, I'll say this: we had an endless budget. We had a God budget. We had a. Budget. <laughs> I like that. I like we, that. That could afford anything we needed to get done, and we got it. <laughs> right, right, right. That dude. You know, I tell everybody, man, you know, man, you need a 4K camera, you need this, you need that. No, you don't. You just need to start getting busy, okay? You'd be surprised at what happens when you start getting busy, okay? Yeah. What you doing, man? I'm making a movie. Can I be in it? Man, you got an actor, okay? I'm making a movie. We hungry. Right, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me be your crowd services. Come on, man. But I tell you what you got to do, though. You can't forget about those people when you're on your way up. Yeah. You can't forget about them. No. Okay. You, you can't. If you get a budget. You get a, a, a money budget. You can't forget about those that was working, working with you on your God. You had your God budget. Yes. And, okay. And, and everybody worked so well with me. I can't wait until we start to see some revenue from this, so that I can. I can't wait to see their faces when they get money from the work that they did, the seed that they planted. I can't wait, man. That, okay. That's. I'm excited that, for everybody involved in this thing, man. That's right. why I want. Everybody all your fans, I want everybody, please go out. When you get time this weekend, binge watch with your girl. 
binge watch day ones. You won't be disappointed. And please tell a friend, tell somebody to tell somebody. We need to make this one big. The new okay. boys in it, we got it. Uh, hit me about the results of the high school football. Don't, don't, oh, okay. All right, folks. All right, man. You're live with my man, Steve Russell Hart of Truth. And now the producer, director, editor, music supervisor, uh, actor from <laughs> the series uh, Day Ones. Day Ones. Day Ones. Yeah. Okay. Who did who did the graphics for you? Did you did the graphics too? Uh, no, I um I, I budgeted that out. You know, um once once I was done editing, I looked at what I had, you know, mm -hmm. and what I was dealing with, and I I, I needed something epic, you know, okay. I needed. Something epic man and like i said you know the universe it, it it brings things to you man when you're in alignment you know i can't even tell you how things fell into place with the graphics and the artwork and stuff like that man it just turned out perfect lonzo man okay. it just right. out, you know i broke the bank to get certain things done and i don't regret it. you know this, what your I mean? this, your, this your first movie project very first film man very wow. first time picking up the camera man now, you know what? I'm going to tell you like I tell everybody else. Your first record, your first movie, <laughs> whatever, is your ugly baby. Yes. Okay? That's your ugly baby. What I mean by that is, okay? No mother has ever had an ugly baby, okay? Right. A mother orangutan, look at her baby. That's my beautiful baby, okay? Yeah. Now, yeah. You, look, you look at that baby 10 years from now, whoo! That baby was kind of ugly back in the day, okay? But at that time, if you give birth with it, that Beautiful. first song, you yeah. can't tell me my first song wasn't the shit, okay? Right. <laughs> but now I look back at my, after I did other productions and got better, damn, that was kind of lightweight in production-wise. Yeah. But you know what, though? You need that to go to the next level. Yeah. You can't, you can't start at the top, okay? You would yeah. like to. You would like to start at the yeah. top, but you can't start at the top. Well, sometimes... You got to do what Steve did. You got to do what Lonzo did. Start your own channel. And if Netflix want to pick it up or Hulu want to pick it up, fine. But yeah. you still got a home for it. You ain't trying to, yeah. you, you ain't got something that you made sitting sit in your closet waiting on somebody to pick it up. Okay? Yeah. People yeah, can I, watch it. It's over with now. I couldn't do that, Lonzo. I, I'm telling you, man, that would have took me to my grave waiting on somebody, bro. I, I couldn't do it, man. It, 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 that, that, those days are over. And anybody, I'm a, just for anybody listening, if there's anything that you've been pushed to do by your higher self is edging you and, and urging you to do, just do it. Yeah. Be like Nike, man. Just do it. Just do it. Just I would, do it. I went back and grabbed two movies that I was in, okay, that were just just like a, we just said. Somebody shot them a little while ago. Didn't It was, you know, it was a passion of... Uh, a uh, 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 fruit of uh, what you call that? A uh, uh, labor of love. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with a god budget, and saying, yeah. "I'm gonna do a movie. Want to be in it? Yeah, I will do it. Come on." And yeah. they were sitting in the closet. She said, "I said, baby, I got a channel. I want to put the movie on my channel. Come on, get it, okay?" Yeah. So, and I, I got two or three movies like that, okay. That's and I got an old. I have a documentary I shot sitting in my in my safe. I, you know what? I'm gonna put put the documentary on there, okay? So. <laughs> You know, you 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 have to be able to. Um, yes, all this stuff could have been better, but sometimes just looking back and seeing what you could have did better gonna help you move forward today. Yes, yes. It's like yeah, yeah. it's like being a football player watching the watching the uh, the, foot, the films from the, from from the previous game. Okay, yeah. right, exactly. And and that's so funny you said that because. I was I was in alignment, Lonzo, with this first one being the ugly baby, bro. I okay. wasn't a that. You get what I'm saying? But because I'm such a movie buff and I wanted to accomplish a certain thing, I made sure this ugly baby had lungs and okay. a good beat heart. You right. Know what I'm but you're so right about that ugly baby. I can imagine I'm getting ready to start a horror film like home alone meets friday the 13th in the next three weeks and i can just imagine the production quality on this film compared to the first the okay. ugly baby like you said it's gonna be I, i'm gonna look back and cringe like oh my god i didn't use any lighting in that scene you know 
But hey, like you said, man, that's just how it is. You got to crawl before you walk. And yo, those ugly babies, man, they start a franchise sometimes, bro. Man, look, my podcast was the ugliest baby I had in a long time, okay? My, when I first started this podcast, it was an ugly baby, and I knew it was an ugly baby, okay? If if I if I didn't get the help I got, I was going to abort this ugly motherfucker. Because <laughs> when I first started doing this shit, man, it yeah. was humming and buzzing and blinking and flashing because I didn't know nothing about yeah. live streaming, okay? Yeah. Man, everybody said, man, you need to go and um, record it, fix it later on. I like being live, okay? I, I, I had a show that was live before. I know the kind of interaction you get when you have a live show, okay? And um, one of my buddies saw the show, Lonzo. I'm going to come by the pad, man, show you how to make that happen. He did, okay? Another buddy said, man, start, start using this app as opposed to this app, and you'll see a difference in your production also. You can get a better quality. And I did. Right. So once people see you moving, they can help move you in the right direction. But if you're just sitting yeah. there, what you waiting on? Wait on my, yeah. uh, wait on the nine K camera. Okay, don't come out to two thousand thirty. I'm still be waiting on it though. Okay, and what you shoot? What did you shoot with just for protection? That four K? No, I shot with an A six thousand five hundred. So what yeah, you, it's a four K camera, but it's not that red. It's not that brent. That that excellent crispy. I didn't want this first. I wanted this to be like menace to society in the sense. Or more like uh, Snow in the Bluff. I wanted this first one to be grungy. I wanted to create a, a urban classic, Lonzo. I wanted to create a hood movie that's not the same as what you're used to, but the same. But I wanted to still have that feel like it's been there before. I wanted you to feel like you know the characters already. You know, so I shot it in a certain way to get a certain look on purpose. Okay. And like Said, man, this is the baby. This is that first ugly baby, and we made it, man. We did okay. it, Lonzo. Once you give birth one time, you can do it again. We can do it again, we man. Can do it again. Yeah, I'm and so that's the beauty of it. But one thing yeah. I, 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 I like what I saw, Doc. One thing I okay. can say you definitely did a good job on was the sound. Thank you. Because the you. sound determines a, a hood movie from a television movie. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. And, and people don't. I, I didn't realize that until I started listening to. I start watching different movies. I said, oh, I can tell. That's, that's what I mean, because the sound is different. You hear all the cars passing by, but in yours, it was it was well mic'd. I don't know what you guys did, but we're going to talk about yeah. that. It was well mic'd, so all you heard was the artist, and you heard, heard, you heard the background, but it wasn't it wasn't um, prevalent enough to distract you from the, uh, from the dialogue, which is great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I learned a lot while I was shooting, you know. Uh, I didn't realize the importance of lighting, uh, I didn't. I didn't realize. Um, I went. I went to school in the midst of shooting the movie. I went to Pasadena City College to take a film class. Okay, and it helped me. And if once you start watching the series, you're gonna notice that from episode one to like, uh, once I get to episode, once you get to episode three, you're gonna say, "Oh, okay." Okay. He yeah, got. Okay. He got an A in that class. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got a good grade. Okay. I got that. I got that. So, uh, it, it, it's it, the things that I learned shooting were invaluable, bro. Like, I, I didn't realize that you 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 light for a dark shot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That you suppose you have to light a dark shot. Okay. You know you have to you have to mic up for a certain thing. Like when you're outside shooting, you have to. It's, I understand now shooting this by myself in the sense of being the, the producer and director. I understand now why you have ADs and all these different people in control of certain things, because there's a lot to be aware of when you shoot the yes. film, yes. because once you get into edit, you can't change that shit. Right. You know, you can change the, in, way, baby. the way it sounds. Yeah. You have right. to, it's, it's, it's tough, man. But like I said, I learned so many valuable lessons shooting day ones. I can't wait till we get the horror film done and start working on the season two of day ones. I can't <laughs> wait. All right, man. You what can you find? Huh? You have to do a cameo for me in, epi in, in season Come on, man. I, I, what, you, what, you, what you want, Freddy Krueger? You want Jason? No, what you want me to do? No, I need to do an episode in, in, in uh, season two. I need, you know, the guys, they're trying to get out of the streets and go into music. 
you know, one of the guys want to want to turn into a Suge Knight and, and get him a label and stuff. And I think you would be perfect to be the executive that they come to to make oh, that. Transition. You got my number. It's done deal. Done deal. Oh, I'm going to hold you to it. Done man. deal. Done deal. Done deal, Doc. Done deal. All right. All right. Where, where can they find you, SD? Hey. Everybody can follow me on um, Instagram at Stephen Russell Hearts. That's um, Stephen Russell H A R T S S. It's two S's, two S's on Hearts on Instagram, and you can find me on my esoteric page on Instagram. It's Stephen underscore Speaks. It's okay. Stephen underscore Speaks, and on Facebook, Stephen Russell Hearts. Um, and if you got a sense of humor and you're not easily offended, you can follow Steve. He rich, okay. S T B E H E R I C H. Now I got. Uh, why you say that, man? Why you say? That? Are you easily offended? If you're not easily, because which, what's the, the Stevie Rich page is that that part of my personality that don't really care about what you think. <laughs> so, ah, okay. Offended, you I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it out. To be on this page, if things get under your skin, if you're offended by the way people say certain things and things, you know, it's it's a very open adult page. You know, I have a lot of fun on that page. So you know what, man, people need to start laughing more. Stop taking themselves so yes. goddamn serious, dude. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I oh man, you know, I, I know we was, I was going to wrap up, but since you just pushed that button right there, I got to say this, man, because I, I know a lot of cats, man, that was used to be a lot of fun to hang out with, but they, they got older. They didn't got this image on them. Now they got to be hard all the time, dude. Man. What happened to you, man? What happened? He you ain't no. You, you lost yourself trying to be somebody else, man. You, you got lost in what, what they say. You got you got blinded by your own light. Yes. You got mm -hmm. blinded by your own shine. Okay. Yep. And I'm like, dude, come on. Why, when did you stop being fun, man? When did you stop? You know. Or the, or the, the next thing is they get so religious you can't you can't hardly talk to them no more. That's yeah. probably the more, the more, dude, I remember when you were boning girls in the back of the car. What are you talking about? Every yeah. day, you know, come on, man. Come on. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, Doc. It's something, man. I, I've, I've learned, uh, being in right knowledge, I've learned that if you focus on yourself in the right way, like if you're, if you're, if you're strong enough to accept all of the things that you consider to be, uh, not so perfect about yourself that opens you up to be exactly who you need to be to attract what you need and what you want, you know, okay. I like on, that. Pur on I like purpose, that. I like not on that. accident. You know, you want to, you want to know that your AK is loaded with real bullets. You want to shoot on purpose. You don't want to just, you don't want to not even know that you got an AK in your hand. And most of us with talents, you know, a lot of us, we, we're so out of alignment with ourselves. We don't even know the God potential, the God strength that we carry on a day-to-day -day basis with our thoughts. That's true. You know? We don't understand that the way that you think determines the way that you feel and the universe responds to the way that you feel. So we got to start with the changing of the mind in order to change the feeling to get what we really, really want, man. There's a lot of people working really hard, Lonzo. There's a lot of people working jobs that they hate. There's a lot of people living lives that they hate because they don't realize it's their power that they've asked for this unknowingly. The universe mm. thinks if you're mad about something, if you feel down about things, the universe thinks you're praying for that. <laughs> And you got to know this. You got to know that the universe is responding to what you're feeling like. And mm. you got to be on purpose. I don't want the universe to give me more of being mad at Lonzo. Okay. I don't want okay. I want the universe to give me the peace and abundance that I really want. That feeling that I want from being rich. I got to grab that feeling right now and enjoy that feeling while I'm not rich so that the universe can oblige and give me it. Right. And that Lonzo, they don't know it. People think that you have to work hard when the universe is our genie. Mm. The universe is waiting to bless you. People are living experiences right now that they created and they don't even know they created it, Lonzo. Dude. They, they're good, and, good and bad. Good and bad. Good and bad. The universe. Good and bad. Good good and bad. And, that's our thing. The universe, remember the law of one is what the universe is based on. The law of one, all is one. You can't have good without bad. You cannot have light without dark. We're the one that create good and bad. Okay. 
right. So we have to be on purpose with the way that we think. We got to be on purpose with the way that we feel. If you feel bad about something, change that feeling. Go back and remember when you were 12 years old and you hit a home run and everybody picked you up. Stay there. You know what I mean? You know, I often, when, when it gets heavy on me and, and my ego tries to make things, make me look at what's going on like it's real and we know we're in the matrix, I always go back to the first performance troop had on Arsenio when we were flying high. Wow. And do you know, it brings me right back to joy, Lonzo. If I if you go back to uh when you want to make love to me, you got to do it. When you go back to the sessions, you gotta feel good about that because yeah. you was the one back there pushing and saying, do this, do it, you know. That's that that brings you joy right today on your podcast. That same joy you can put it right in manifestation into the podcast right now. And that's what I'm doing. So anybody watching, I would love to encourage somebody, even if it's just one person, change the way that you are looking at your life because you created that. So mm. if you don't like what you created, be on purpose with what you create from this point. Absolutely. You are the in the boss of your experience you are not a victim that is a lie you've created this experience that you're experiencing and if you don't like it you have the power to change it immediately all right that being said i'm, I'm gonna lift the offering for steve send me a cash app no i'm just joking <laughs> all, right, hey, doc. Doc. So hard too. <laughs> all right steve tell, tell them where they can find you one, one more time doc Hey, on Instagram, Stephen Russell Hartz, H A R T S S, Steve E. Rich, and Steve underscore Stephen underscore speaks, all on Instagram, Facebook, Stephen Russell Hartz, Twitter, Stephen Russell Hartz. And Lonzo, I love you, man. Thank you for having me, man. No Please problem, man. Hey, I, got a quick, I got a question for you. One of my guys said, What's the chance of us getting a uh, troop reunion on the, on the podcast? Oh, I'm on here. So that's okay. a high that's a All high right. probability. All right, that's cool. Give it John, John, and other fellas. Let's see if we can make that happen sometime in the near future, man. Hey, let's do it, bro. All Come right, on. Doc. My man, Stephen, Stephen Russell Hart from Truth Folks, dropping it like it's like it's real. Check out <laughs> check out his show on Amazon, right? Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, day one, folks. It's, it's pretty nice. You'll like it. You'll you'll enjoy it. In the meantime, yeah. Steve, we out of here, Doc. Much love to you, bro. Hey, I love I, I'm going to call you back on that uh, streaming situation, though. Hey, I, we already got it. We, All right, done deal. All right. I love you, bro. But much love to you, Doc. Everybody take care. Thanks for listening. Watch day ones, everybody. Love you. All right. Peace. That's my man, Steve Russell Hart, man, from the truth, folks. Uh, thank you all for watching. It's about that time, folks. We are out of here. Like I say, every time I open this microphone, folks, from the West Coast to the East Coast and everything between, folks, you are live with Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. From Eve after dark to concerts in the park. Yes, I still do that, folks. All right, y'all. See y'all next week. We'll be right back. In the meantime, peace, folks. Love you. Thank you for watching, everybody. All my folks in the chat room, much love to you, folks. Thank you for watching the show. I'll see y'all Tuesday with my man, Dusty Pitch.